but the Quran, Quran itself. No, no, no. Where, where? I want to see the word read. Where it says you cannot read. This is the worst. Uh, you know, I will, I will. No, 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 no. Hold on. You see, blah, 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 blah. You, I'm, I'm not making fun of you, but this is how I talk. Remember that, okay? Don't be offended. Yes, or no. Okay. No, what I'm telling you. I, okay, I, I want you to show me where is the word read. Yeah, I'm coming to it. If where, you go where? Quran.com. I'm, re I'm reading the Quran.com. My friend, I have the yeah. Quran in front of me and I am Arab, speak Arabic. It says here, وَمَا كُنْتَ تَتْلُو مِنْ قَبْلِهِ مِنْ كِتَابِ where it says the word read. The translation I'm reading. Okay, so reading. the so the translation you are reading is made by a donkey because the word tatlu does not mean read, it means recite. And this is your translation too, because it says Talawa, Talawa to Quran is reciting Quran, not reading Quran. Talawa, this is an Arabic word. This is why the translator here he says recite. What translation are you are reading? This from Quran.com. What, what the name of the translator? What the name of the translator? I don't know how to find it. Like, can you think you can? Well, uh, here we go. I'm changing translation one after one. This word mean recitation does not mean reading. The translation here says read, but tatlu mean recite and actually you look what happened you quoted this verse for me to prove to me that muhammad did not know how to read correct just, just a second Let me no 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 hold on hold on did you yeah, quote, did, mean, did you quote this, no verse. hold on i will go with you did you quote yes. this verse for me to prove to me that muhammad he did not know how to read yes okay i will go with you let us assume that the word mean here read but look what happened it says before this quran that's mean muhammad he now he knew how to read. <laughs> how come you did not see the word before? No, so, no, no, no hold on. You search. You, it took you three actually, days. No, no, it took you three no, days, no, four no. days to search for it. It no, says no, no, here. No, 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 listen, focus with me, please. You do not know. Neither you do. Did, did you read any book before this? That means he know how to read. Read the book before this. So you brought me a verse to prove to me that Muhammad did not know how to read the fact. It says the opposite. It says that before this, you did not read any book. Before this, which means you did read this book, but before this book, you did not read any book. So this verse actually confirmed that Muhammad read if we use it as a word read. If we use, if we flip the translation, the word yet tatlu, to read that will make it that Muhammad he knew how to read so in fact you gave me a verse now based on your translation confirming that Muhammad he knew how to read how to write because it says if I say to you before this book you did not read any book that mean you did read this book but how will you the the, the second sentence no need to write any book how will you uh, he did not write Muhammad never wrote books what this have to do if I know how to write a book all my life I, did, I was able to read and write, but I did not write a book, and then I start writing books. So does that mean before that day I wrote my books, I do not know how to write or read? So Muhammad did not write books, okay, no problem. But here it says, neither you read any book before this. So you did not read a book before this, that means you did read this. Okay, but in that case, how will you then explain uh, the stories from the Bible and the Torah in the Quran then because if you if you remember our conversation if it's copying so how will you get this information what, what do you mean okay. you know the the, the Quran is, is talk about uh, you know the stories from the previous books so if you haven't give read, me one story how... from the previous book came accurate in the Quran all of them they are funny and stupid give me one no but the stories are there right you say the stories are there so how in that case, you are also contradicting by yourself because if if he couldn't read those books, how did he copy those or how did he come up with those stories? Muhammad, he lived with the Jews. First of all, I did not know. I did not say he did not know how to read. It's you who said that. I said to you, he know how to read. Secondly, I do not need to know. Uh, I do not need to read and write to listen. Isn't it in the Quran? In the same, in, in, in chapter 9, verse number 60. 
Isn't it saying there that Muhammad was accused that he is an ear? Is that correct? Yeah, I know that was. Uh, okay, why, why was... they accuse him that he's an ear? What ear mean? Only just to before go there, because then we're going to change the topic. I will give you this one more verse. Uh, you can just no, no, why, why he was accused to be an ear? If you can show me the verse, I, if I remember, it was speaking about, like, people accuse him. Uh -huh. uh, and it's more like, you know, it's a more like a caution, like, if it was copying. If you, you can just put the words, then let me see it before I can continue. No, no, I'm asking you, why, why they say that he is... Uh, he is an ear, which means he take whatever he hear. Did Muhammad live between the Jews? Of course not. They were okay. living there. Yeah, there is also hadith. He, All right. He so, saw, so saw when you live between the Jews, hmm? do you hear what the Jews say? You hear, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Do you hear what the Christians say? Yeah, of course. So now if you hear from me that I believe in the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, do you need to write and read to know that? Or it's enough no. to hear it from me and now you know what I believe? Yeah, if it's enough to hear. Okay. And actually, uh, I believe Muhammad, he knew how to write, how to read. It still does not make him an educated person because Muhammad, he made big mistake. As an example, Mary, she is the sister of Aaron. As an example, Mary, she is the daughter of uh, uh, Amran. Amran is the father of Aaron. So Muhammad, he think Maryam, yes, in the Old Testament, there's a woman, her name is Maryam, and she is the sister of Aaron and Moses. So the city Muhammad, he thought that Maryam is the same Maryam is the mother of Jesus. The, when a Jewish man, he came to Muhammad and he told him, hey, listen, uh, he came to Aisha, Aisha was at home. He told her, well, I heard the messenger saying, that uh, 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 Isa, even Isa is a wrong name for Jesus, he is the son, uh, he, you know, uh, his, uh, his mother is Maryam, the sister of Aaron. But there is hundreds of years between them. Aisha, she said to him, you are a liar. Then Muhammad, he learned that, and even people of Najran, they told, they, they told the Muslims, how your prophet, he says such a mistake. So they went back to Muhammad, and now Muhammad, he tried to fix it. So he said, at that time, they used to call them the names by their ancestors, the great prophets. But this is false, because Aaron is not the great prophet. Actually, he's condemned many, many places. According to the, even according to Muslims, he told, the, he allowed the Jews to worship idols. In the same time, it was too late for Muhammad to fix it. Why? Because he said that Mary is the daughter of Amran. To the fact, the whole chapter in the Quran, chapter 3, it's called Ali Amran. So Muhammad, he think all those names mentioned in this chapter are the family of Amran. <laughs> but Mary, she have nothing to do with Amran. She is not even from the tribe of Amran. So Muhammad, he start talking about Isa, about Zechariah, about Moses, and about Isaac. All of them, they are, this is the family of Amran. But what Amran, what are you talking about? What Amran have to do with this? So suddenly, the father of Moses become the grandfather of Jesus how such a mistake can happen. So Muhammad, he learned from the Jews, yes. He learned from the Christian, yes, but he learned absolutely false information. He, he missed up. As an example, you're a prophet, he says, that in the time of Moses, the Samaritan, he misled the people, but at that time, there was no Samaritan. What are you talking about? How the Samaritan came to existence in the time of Moses. So Moses, he go to the mountain. He come back, he found the Samaritan, they mislead them. How this happened? Anyone, he have little knowledge of history. He knew that this is impossible because those are not exist at that time. You do not need to be a genius. You can go right now and search in Google. You will find that this is a very wrong information. How Muhammad, he come to such a mistake? If this is a book coming to him from his God. 
So the Quran full of history mistakes, geographic mistakes, uh, science mistakes, grammar mistakes, uh, language mistake, uh, even the word Quran is wrong because there is nothing in Arabic is called Quran. This is an Aramaic word. Okay, we can continue. Uh, okay, but just for a moment, as I say, if I don't feel about Quran, you can just try to answer me regarding my questions regarding Christianity. Okay. Uh, or what, 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 what but before we go to Christianity, I want to know first if you are still a Muslim or not, because you see, why I want to go to tell you about Christianity if we are not done with Islam? We have to be done with Islam, otherwise, uh, like, what is the reason for you to leave Islam if you are not convinced Islam is wrong? I'm here to convince you Islam is wrong. And then, if we are, if we reach that point that you agree with me that Islam is wrong, then I will have all the time for you to speak about Christianity. But why want to jump? Why want to cut in the middle of the work we are doing? And then we jump to a different topic. Are you convinced really that Muhammad is right when he spoke about the Samaritan, that they all exist in the time of Moses? Is that what history says? Are you convinced that the baby is made from the sperm and the sperm became a dead blood and then the blood became a lump and then the lump become bones, flesh and bones? Are you convinced that the sun set in a muddy water and he found where the sun set? Are you convinced that there is a dam of Gog and Magog and there is a creatures behind it who they are not a human, but they look close to human and they are evil and they are trillions of by number. If we are seven billions, they are trillion because every one of us have 1000 of them. This is from the time of Muhammad. So if everyone multiply 1000 before he died, that means by now they are maybe a billion, billion trillion. All of those are behind a dam, and this dam is made from copper and iron. Either we uh, either we agree that this is a fiction story and Muhammad is a liar, or it's Quran. It's not a hadith. No, in, in that case, Warren, you don't have to like un, like say it's not right and just change because I'm trying my finding the truth. I'm, I can read about two religions at the same time before you can read you can read but first for me i want to finish yeah. with you about islam either yeah. you agree because I, i'm not going to waste my time uh, simply I, I, I don't want to be rude to you but it's a waste of time to, to answer you about the bible when you are not convinced yet that islam is false i'm here to explain islam first and then when you leave islam i will be happy to to go with you to the bible do you agree that there is somebody his name is alexander the great he is in Islam, his name is Mr. Green, because simply he drank from the fountain of youth. <laughs> you know the story, right? <laughs> I, I have heard that story, yes. Okay, in that case... Okay, do you believe in the fountain of youth? Uh, just a quick minute, when you talk about this, I heard there was also a fountain of youth in the Bible mentioned. You have this conversation. No, we don't have it. Hey, show, show it to me so we can laugh. No, no, but last time when you had this debate, when someone... Uh -uh. Uh, you see, lady, okay, my, 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 my friend, my friend. Yeah. So, Muhammad, obviously, he copied legions of his story. This is why chapter 9, verse number 61, 60, speaking about him as an ear. They accused him to be an ear. The Jews, they came to him. They said to him, okay, Muhammad, tell us about what Prophet Zulkarnain he did. They are laughing at him. Muhammad, he believed them. He thought, he took it seriously. He came back after two weeks. He told them, Allah told me to tell you this. So suddenly, Alexander the Great, he become a prophet of God. And his name is Zulkarnain because simply he wear a hat with two horns. But according to Muhammad, because he wanted to convert his people to Islam, they hit him with the, with the hammer in his head. So he got like boom, boom, you know, boing in his head. He died. Allah resurrected him. He brought him back to life. And then he came back to his people to convert them to Islam. They hit him again with the hammer. So now he have two pimple in his head. So he was called the man with the two horn. Look at the smart explanation of Muhammad. And now Muhammad will tell them about this man. Who is the one is talking Allah? Allah, according to him, that this guy, he uh, guided by Allah. He's a messenger of Allah. And then he, you know, Allah gave him 
all the mean of victory. Why Allah want to give him all the mean? Because he is a Muslim. Zul Qarnayn became a Muslim. Since when? Islam hijacked everybody. Michael Jackson is a Muslim. Job is a Muslim. Joe Biden is a Muslim. Trump is a Muslim. Christian Prince, he died. We make him Muslim after he died. Just wait. We will say he put his finger up. He was giving, maybe Christian Prince was giving finger to somebody. And then suddenly they will say he was giving shahada. Just wait. So anyone become famous, they will make him a Muslim. So now Allah is telling the story. And they ask you about Zul Qarnayn saying, I shall tell you something about his story. Who's talking Allah? Verily, we established for him in earth. Okay, we gave him all the means of every. Why you want to do that? I mean, everybody knows Al Quran is, is a pagan man. So he fought away until he reached the sitting place of the sun. Look, where is the, what the heck is that? Do you believe in this that the sitting place of the sun? And then he found it sitting in the black, muddy spring of water. And he found near it, near what? Near the sun. <laughs> Can you just explain this? I really don't understand, like, what's the problem with this? And it can be the the English. It's so I don't understand, like, what's the? If you can just explain to me, it's spring of black blood. What what do you mean? It's the problem. There is a legion. What's... There is a legion about the sun goes. You know, the, the a human being they see sometimes boiling water, boiling water from volcano. Okay. There's a legion that the sun goes and get its heat from those water from this such a water so there is a fountain there's a water a spring of water and the reason it is muddy and black because simply this is a volcano you know boiling water so how the sun get its heat how come at night it get cold and we don't uh, have the heat obviously the sun lose it so the sun goes every day and dump itself in that water and come back the second day full of heat where it get the heat from the water and then the muslim they try to lie to us and they say well this is talking about uh, uh, this is how it's appear but as you see there's no appear not there's no way he's in, it doesn't say he thought maybe no it says he found it he reached a place where the sun set he found a spring of spring, not ocean. Zach and Nike, he says to you, when you go to the ocean, don't you see the sun going in the uh, in the ocean? Well, this well, is from yeah. the perspective, from the perspective of Zulkarnayn. That's false. There's no ocean. This is a spring of water. And there's no way you can think that the sun going inside a spring of water. Could you show the, the explanation of what you're telling? Because... Well, if, oh, we, oh, if, oh, we, oh, if we go in the hadith, if we go in the hadith, let us see uh, this website, the hadith wasn't working. I hope, let us hope it's working now. I don't know, it's not working. You see, I'm trying to open it. It says this hadith cannot be reached. Let me try with different uh, website. Give me a second. They asked Muhammad, uh, Muhammad, he asked his companion, Do you know where the sun goes? He said, uh, No. I think the hadith, the, the, the website is down. Okay. Yeah, guys, can you open the website? Let us see. Let me let me pause the link. You guys tell me, is the website working for you or, or only not working for me? Okay. They cannot, they cannot block me because I have tons of uh, IP. So I don't think they can block me. But let me know if the well, website is working. Not, it's not working for me either. Uh, okay, so it's not working. All right. So uh, uh, Muhammad, uh, Muhammad, he said, the, uh, he asked Abu Dhar, do you know where the sun goes? He said, no, Allah and his messengers knows best. He says the sun goes and set in a spring of muddy water, hot water. So it is in the Quran. It is in the Hadith. Muhammad explained it. Why? Because people in the old days, they thought that the sun, I mean, fictions, they have a lot of superstitions. As an example, your prophet, he think that the sun rise from between the two horns of shaitan. That's why he said, don't pray when the sun approach. Here we go. It's working again. Look like the, sun, the website start working again. Let us see. Uh, because it's flip. Let us see. Let us hope it's working. Maybe not. Uh, I think still not. Okay. So, uh, uh, you know, why I cannot pray because the sun coming from between the horn of shaitan? Who in the world would believe in such a thing? How, how 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 a messenger of God who believe in God he can say such a thing? So Muhammad he have tons of his stories. All of them they are stupid and, and full of fictions and, and dummy stuff. 
regarding astronomy, space, like Allah, he created the star to shoot shaitan if you try to spy at him. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Is that really what, 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 the, what the stars are for? I mean, if shaitan can sleep in your nose, how in the world we want to shoot the shaitan with a star? Look how tiny the shaitan is. And he is invisible. And supposedly nobody can go out of the space. Sipi, just a question then. In that case, okay, for a moment, if I say Islam is wrong, or I don't, God show me the right the right path, you see? Uh, this was my question as the last time. Why, I find it like, why so many people are still following this religion? Why uh, nobody... How many, how many people, well, how many people they smoke every day? No, no, no. How many people? So no, why are people still believing this religion then? Doesn't matter. Yeah, how, how many people still smoke? It can be Take me to the Middle East and give me a radio station and allow me to smoke without being killed and let us see how many Muslims will stay. The reason they are still Muslims is because there's no freedom. There is zero atheist in the Middle East. Huh? Have you ever heard of a whole country? There's all believers. Zero atheist, zero homosexual. There is zero gay, zero lesbian. Uh, z there is zero of everything. There's only Muslims. Why? Because this is a region of terrorism. There's no freedom. The, all the people in the, in the Middle East, they want to fast Ramadan. Every house of a Muslim I used to go to when I used to live in the Middle East, nobody fast. In the street, everybody is fasting. So Islam, the Islamic terror, because nobody, look, here we go. This guy, uh, uh, Amran Khan, speak about Islam, and etc. Who dare to insult the Prophet? You don't dare. But you can have sex with the women secretly. You can take a bribe. You can do everything. All of them, they are believers. And at the same time, Pakistan is the most corrupt country in the world. Everybody have bars in his windows. Why? Is that because of security? Is that because the country have good security? No, it's because of the... Uh, so, dealing. so can I say all Pakistan are Muslims or zero Muslims? I don't know how many Muslims there is, but give them freedom. Let us see how many Muslims. You will not know how many Muslims in a country unless you give them a freedom. Then you will know who is a Muslim, who is not, who is a Christian, who is not, who is a gay, who is not. Give them freedom. If you want to know how many thieves in a city, take the police away. Then you will be surprised. You will find that your neighbor is a thief. And maybe you are too. And maybe me. The second the police disappear, the street is full of thieves. The police in the street, everybody behave. So, doesn't mean if nobody is stealing now, or few only, that means there is only a few thieves. No. This is why you see the second there is a chaos happen, you know, riot, then suddenly they break into stores and they break into banks and they steal phones and jewelries. They rob Walmart, I mean, but hundreds. Like what happened? Suddenly all the town is our thieves. Yes, there's a lot of thieves. Give them freedom to be thieves and you will see who is a thief, who is not. If there's no freedom, you do not know. If there's no freedom for me to tell you what I'm saying right now, there's nobody to say what I'm saying right now. Nobody, zero. Does that mean all of the world, including Christian Prince, he's silent, he's mute now. All of us, we believe in Islam or we believe in Christianity. No, because there's no freedom. Freedom, my friend, is the only test of who is and who is not. Your kids, your daughter, your son, and I'm not talking about you, I'm talking about everybody. Yeah. If you force your daughter, don't go there, don't do that, she would do it secretly. I remember when I was in a, in, a, in a school, you know, uh, we went in a, uh, a taxi to go from city to city. Me and the guy, we, we are from the same uh, area. We took a taxi, but we cannot pay for the taxi, all of it. You know, it's not worth it. So the taxi, you know, like they can take other passengers with us. So he took three girls, they sit in the back seat. The two of us, we sit in the front. The three girls in the back, they wear wearing burqa. They are wearing hat under the hat so nobody can see their hair. They are wearing gloves. 
and they are Muslims, very conservative. We arrived to the second city, and we want to continue now. The, the third city, the driver he have to wait in the station so he can get three passengers to replace. He will not then continue unless either we pay for the space is empty, or we wait for other three passengers. So we said we wait, we waited, and then the girls they came back, and they came to the guy. Hey, Abu Muhammad, we forgot with you a case. The guy, he looked at them and we look at them too. They are not the one who came with us. They are wearing, you know, those like Spaniel clothing, you know, open chest, their breast is coming, their hair, makeup, short skirt. The guy, he said, no, no, you did not come with me. The one who came with me is the three girls and they are conservative, wearing hijab. <laughs> they said, it's, it's us, it's us. He said, no, it's not you. And then they start telling him what he was saying to us during the trip to prove to him that they are the one who was in the back seat. They start telling him about how he write his homework. He's, you know, there's things he told us nobody knows. I mean, just now we are in the trip with him. And he, they told him even what we said back to him, what we asked him, what he said to us, the guy, he went crazy. And then we, when we travel again, he said, man, I will never let my girls to go study in different city. Look, those girls, they wear hijab, they wear burqa. As soon they arrive to a new city, they, look what they are wearing. How I can let my daughter to go to different city? I'm going to stop her from going to school now. So give them a freedom. You see in Saudi Arabia, 20 years ago, they go vacation in Europe. They go in the toilet seat in the, air, in the airplane, in the, in the bathroom, before even they land. They go in the bathroom, they have a new clothes with them, they have a little tiny bag with them. They go in the bathroom, they come with the new clothing. There's no burqa, there's no hijab. So when they go in the airplane from their country, they are wearing burqa. As soon the airplane fly and they are out of the, the, the kingdom, right away they go to the bathroom and they put makeup and they wear short skirt. So to know who is a believer or is not, give them freedom. So if you see a woman, she converted to Islam, she's wearing hijab, will she have a choice? She did that. I believe her, but I don't believe a, a, a Middle Eastern woman. Those are forced to freedom, okay, my so friend. Freedom. So freedom. Okay, I'm living in a free, free country. Uh, there are many Muslims also living here. So just for a moment, uh, why is not God showing us the right way? You know, as I'm talking. God is showing you. I'm, here we go. God, he's using me to talk to you. Who said he did not? No, me and you. You say I will, I'm, I'm coming to my point. You say if someone is born in a different religion, Okay, in the family, it's not all the time that that person will try to seek other religion. Like most of the time, it will be like he will continue as he has been teach, as he been. That's I'm telling you. Like why in that case God is not showing us the right sign? Okay, in that case I'm I'm speaking to you, but can you guarantee like all the peoples, like all Muslims, they are like uh, do it as as I'm doing? So how will you explain that? You cannot be a Muslim. Let me, let, you see, I'm a person who say things and I don't care what, what people will say. You cannot find a Muslim and he's a good person. You are, if you are a good person, you are not a Muslim. Because a Muslim is someone who follows Islam. Is that correct? Not all the teachings. Uh, you know, no, no, hold on, I'm, hold on. You see, I'm no, being I'm, honest with you. I, I, I'm telling you what I, I believe. Been, I, mean, I am so being I'm honest with you. Been, no, I, you are. You are. If you are a good person, you are the Muslim, because if you are a Muslim, then you can lie to your wife. Do you lie to your wife? No. Do you approve lying to your wife? Sorry, if I. Muhammad, he says, a Muslim, he can lie to his wife. The wife, she can lie to the husband. He can lie to his friend. He can lie to his enemy who's left. So, are you a good Muslim who lied to your wife, and you like to have a wife lying to you? No. Then you are not a good Muslim. Are you a good Muslim who like to have sex with the children like Muhammad? No. So you are not a good Muslim. You are you are you are not a Muslim at all. Okay. Do you like to use stones to clean your ass? Do you like to take a shower with dead dogs and women blood from period? You say no. We uh, are a bad Muslim. Do you like to kill a Christian just because they are Christians as Muhammad did? He will say no. You are not a Muslim. So a true Muslim is a bad person. He's a bad person. He's very evil, actually. A Muslim by name, he can be a nice person. 
His name is Muhammad, but he don't want to kill people. He don't want to have sex with the children. He don't want to rape the Christian and the Jews and the Hindus and the atheist. Well, that because he's a good person, he's a nice person, but not because he's a good Muslim. A good Muslim is someone who follow Islam. A good Christian is someone who follow Jesus. So if a Christian, he want to go and work as a drug dealer, he is not a good Christian. If a, if a Christian, if somebody wear a cross and he ha is a pimp, well, he is not a Christian, he is an evil person. But if he is a pimp, he can be a Muslim. I can show you even that from the Quran. So you can be a pimp in Islam, but you cannot be a pimp in Christianity. You can be a rabbit in, a rabbit in Islam, but you cannot be a rabbit in Christianity. You can have sex with children in Islam, but you cannot have sex with children in Christianity. You can lie in Islam, but you cannot lie in Christianity. You cannot you, you can you cannot use the name of God in vain in Christianity. You can't even swear in Christianity, but you can use the name of your God to lie as much as you want in Islam. So how that will make you a good person? How Islam will make you a good person? Islam never make a person good. This is why you see all Muslim countries are bad countries. You cannot find one Muslim country have any form of decency. Judges, police, kings, leaders, system, the postman, the garbage man, the butcher, the, 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 the grocery, everybody cheat. No, but how will you explain? You see, I understand this point. This is my also view about, uh, but about trying to, if you get my point, what I'm trying to say, why is not good? Because it, it would be, it would be in, in just like if I'm born in a Muslim family and I didn't happen to, for example, have this conversation with you. Then would it be unjust if I? Well, this is not this is not excuse it, because yes, my friend. No, no, it's not Christianity, excuse, Christianity came. Christ, Christ came. My friend, Christ came. Not not Christian prince. Christ, Christ, Christ came two thousand years ago. So and everybody heard the name of Christ and everybody knows about Christ, and you decide not to listen. So don't tell me it's not my fault. It's your fault. People knows about God since the time of Adam. The children of Adam, they knew about God, yet they are misled. And then the, the flood came. So can they say, what is our fault? No, it's their fault. It's your fault to go where you no. want to go. So, no, but you know, the Quran is saying that the God will, uh, he won't judge you. Like if you haven't get, uh, what do you say? If you haven't get this, uh, couldn't find if I didn't get the message. You see what I'm saying? This it will be the same. My if friend, I that's that's right that's message. false. That false. That false. No, Acor you, according you, to the Quran, according to the Quran, Allah sent messengers, and He never sent the messenger except in the tongue of the people. According yes. to Muslims, Allah He sent 124,000 messengers, but they failed to tell us who are they and where they are sent. According to the Muslims, Allah He warned all mankind. But they fail to tell us where, how, when. So this is always an excuse. Same time, your book talk many, many times about Christ. Talk many times about Abraham, about Isaiah. And then you should notice that the message of Islam does not, is not going in harmony with the message of Abraham. Like was Abraham a black stone kisser? Did even Abraham go to the Kaaba as the Quran says? In fact, the Quran confirmed that Abraham never was there. The Quran says, if this is a book made by other than Allah, you will find in it what? A lot of contradiction. Contradictions, yes. But, okay, isn't it the Quran says that the one who built the house, which means the Kaaba, is Abraham? Yes. Okay. But isn't it the Quran says nobody came to Mecca before Muhammad to warn them? You mean in the sense of the messenger, or, or you mean okay. living when Abraham he came okay. to Mecca, hmm? according to the story, that Abraham came with Ishmael and he warned his children to worship Allah? Yes, he warned his okay. children. Okay, yeah. so how the Quran says that Mecca never have any warner before Muhammad? If you go to chapter 34, verse number 44, it says, and we had not given them scriptures which they could study nor send them before you, Muhammad, any warner. So how Abraham was there, how Ishmael was there, how the children of Ishmael were there, 
and all of them they are Muslims according to Muslims yet nobody came and they never received any scriptures so what Abraham he went there he have a he have like his uh, bikini Abraham he went there to do what so he built the Kaaba the house of God and with his, his son Ishmael yet he did not mention the word of Allah to his people there but the verse is so clear we had not given them scriptures no books before you to study nor send them before you very clear nothing no one before you to the people of the Mecca yes people of Mecca exactly but if the people of Mecca are descended of Abraham how you can say nobody came to them before you <laughs> before you you see the word before if the word before is not there you can you can play with it you can say he's talking to people of Mecca no he's speaking to before you before before your existence yes so before the existence of Muhammad and before Muhammad become a prophet there's nobody came to them as a warner so there is no way Abraham was there same time why the Jews want to hide Mecca why the Jews they want to say why the Jews? okay why Muhammad himself himself abandoned Mecca he was a praying and toward the Jerusalem because he want to be hypocrite to the Jews he was trying to convince the Jews that he's a Jew like them but the Jews did not accept him because he's a pagan so he changed direction just for the sake of hypocrisy and when he noticed that the Jews will not believe in him anyway then Omar he told them let us pray and go back to the pagan religion of our Kaaba was the Kaaba as a choice of Allah or a choice or a choice of our Khattab Omar Khattab he says Rabbi, my Lord agreed with me in three things in different hadiths ten things some they say fifteen things so Allah agreed with me about what about the Kaaba the Qibla so it's not the choice of Allah it was Omar Omar told Muhammad let us pray in the direction of the Kaaba Muhammad he take it and he make a verse exactly as Omar said okay Sibi, we can do it like next time if I will come to talk to you then I will no problem you know. and always you are welcome to invite yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, to invite no, no, a sheikh no, no, no. you know I would like you to invite a sheikh exactly so you can see that nobody can answer me I don't want you to feel like you are not able to answer because you do not know but trust me all Muslims are like you including starting with your sheikh they don't know yes no in the, what I mean of course you have the point that that's that's why I've been listening to your other debates and I don't find many people's could answer you but what I'm trying to say I will continue with my reading of the Bible and then we can because you don't want me to ask something before I'm sure so then we no can have a let, let me give you a chance to ask me a question about the Bible before you go but I want yeah I you know I want to like continue on my topic about this now but go ahead give me a question about the Bible before you go uh, you know I was just reading so I read this uh, Genesis it's uh -huh. also, let me just take a uh, I don't know if it's really in Genesis, but they are like in the beginning of like. Uh, sorry, let me think. Uh, if you help me, I don't know the words, but it was about like uh, angels having children with their humans in the earth. If you yeah, you see, the, 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 you know, some people they have wrong understanding of this. The angels, are, the angels, they are the children of God. Those are the one who believe in God. They were like angels. And then they married from the pagan. They associate themselves from the pagan. So for us, in a, as a Christians, we cannot, or even the Jews, they cannot marry or associate to have a family with someone is a pagan. So they marry. This is not about angels having sex with the human. This is about. This is, this is about. Yeah, I, I just told you. This is about you as an as a person who believe in God. Some people they try to explain it as angels having uh, you know uh, uh, sexual intercourse with a human. That is false. Uh, angels. Because I have Google it yes, as you told. Because I have Google about it, and some people they are speaking about like fallen angels. Like you know, it's a different. Uh, no, <laughs> fallen, fallen angels Google. are angels. You see, the, the, the proof of that Jesus said that when you go, they ask him about a woman who is going to marry her. He said he and she they will not get married. They will be the same as angels. 
which means angels don't have sex. So it's obvious. So angels are not sexual and they don't have sexual desire. And this is why angels cannot be the what it's meant. So the, the Bible sometimes can you like when the Bible says I'm a child of God, is that true? I'm not really. I'm not a child of God. Is God is God my father? No. But we when we pray, we say our father, correct? Yes. Okay, but doesn't mean I'm saying so if you are a foreigner reading my book, they say, Oh, the Christian, they are children of God, so that means they believe that God have sex with their mother and they are, you know, born of, uh, from the from God. But this is not what we believe. This is the same exactly. Uh, what you understand about this verse? Those are not angels marrying them. Those are the good ones who associate themselves with the bad ones. So they are falling. Just a thing, but when I Google about this, they, they call it Nephilim. So what I'm, so how they call them what? people come up with this thing? They call Nephilim. them, the, the what? Nephilim. I see if someone is also writing in the chat. They call it Nephilim. Nephilim? Nephilim. N-E-P-H-I-L-I-M. Nephilim. Nephilim, Nephilim. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you see, it's, so... Yeah, you I know, they, okay, they you, see, you see, you see, uh, 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 if somebody want to give you his, his own understanding, he will say that to you, it's up to you. But, but, uh, but we know for sure that angels cannot have sex. Why? Because Jesus himself explained that we as a human, when we go to heaven, we will be the same as angels. They were asking him, who is going to marry this woman? Who is going to have her? He, was, he said he and she, they will not get married. They will be the same as angels. So angels don't get married. It's obvious, it's clear, and explained by Jesus. So nobody can nobody can say or claim that this is really what happened. The son of God, the same as us, the children of God, who they have sexual relationship, immorality with unrighteous people. And this is, you know, uh, coming from Genesis. So, uh, uh, but those fit in one, like, you know, uh, as an example. Could you just show when, me that, you know, it, it's easier to follow, uh, like from an owner, Sonny, if you have like... If yeah. you go to Genesis 6, if you go to Genesis 6, if you go, you, you have to connect the dots with each other. But hmm. when somebody, he give you, he give you his own understanding. If you go literally, literate, like, literate way, by the word, it says, okay, sons of God. But we know that God don't have sons. We know that we as a Christian, we believe that God have only one son. So they cannot be the son of God because simply they are not. Only God have only one son. So, in order to be the son of God, you have to be Jesus. You cannot be an angel. So those are angels, and they are not sons of God. So son of God mean what? Sons of God and the daughter of men. This is about the fallen people who believe in God, who committed immoral act, and this is why they are falling. Okay. Like the word, word word angels can be used in many way. Like, you know, I can say you are an angel. That's mean you are a very nice man. You are a very uh, caring. You are, you know, that you, uh, uh, you care for people, you help people, but doesn't mean they are really, uh, 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 this is a verse speaking in a metaphorical way. Okay. Yeah. We, we don't believe we don't believe that angels can have sex. This is number one, and we don't believe that angels are not a human. Angels are not a human. Angels are not a human. You know, like in order to have sex, you have to have sex with 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 something have a vagina, and someone have a penis. That's what sex is about, correct? Yeah. So if the human, if the women, they have a vagina, then the one who want to have sex with them, he have to have a penis. Yes. And he have to be sexual, which means he can perform sex. So if angels are not human being, then how can they and how they and why they will have sex with women? 
So obviously this verse has nothing to do with any sex and any kind of sexual activities. This is about the ones who they are supposedly following God and they fail into temptation, going around for their own joy, sexual joy, or any kind of temptation. We can continue with our topic, you know, uh, because uh, I need to read more and uh, come with other points. So we can continue with it. Yeah, you know, time. there is, you know, in, in, always, always, if you want to understand, uh, like, you know, if you want to understand Christianity, then you have to understand what Christianity believes. So we don't believe heaven is a place of sex. We don't believe angels have sex or they will get married. And we have approved of that in other verses from Jesus himself. And, uh, uh, you know, we, be, we, we, we believe that there's fallen angels. For us, Satan himself is a fallen angel, you know. But we don't believe that Satan is having sex with somebody. Even Satan. Just give me the words about you told me angels having not sex. Just for my... So I uh, okay, hold on. Let me... I'm trying to remember. Uh... Give me a second. Because next time, my main question would be around, uh, you know, like uh, the Trinity. You know, for me, what for me, what is important here is like believing in one God, and that's the like concept I would like to understand more. Because you, you know, know be believing also, it's uh, believing in uh, believing in one God, it doesn't make any difference if we believe in ten God or five God, because the question if they are exist or not. You know, if they are exist, then they are exist. If they are not exist, then they are not exist. If you go to Matthew, I think this is in Matthew, but you know, I'm, I'm searching. Give me a second. Um, okay, let us see. Either Matthew 30 or 22, something like that. Hold on. Uh, 33 or 22. Okay. Yeah, maybe Matthew 33. Let's see. Oh, my, sorry, Matthew 22. Sorry, a second. Matthew. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Matthew 22, 30. Uh, okay. uh, no, there's no 30, actually. Hold on. I'm, uh, 20, sorry, 20. Uh, ba -ba 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 20, 20, 20. You see, my memory is being eaten. My memory is in the Quran is way more stronger about the Bible, sadly. Um... And you know, I'm seeing, uh, following the live chat, people are telling me that it's better to begin with the New Testament rather to read the Old Testament. What would you say, like, in that? Yeah, Matthew 22, 30. Okay. Yeah, so it's, you know, it's confirmed for us uh, that they don't get married. Uh, okay, yeah, here we go. Yeah, actually 30. For in resurrection, they neither marry nor, nor are they given in marriage. So when they ask about Jesus, about this woman, if you go and read from verse number 27, like who is this one or even before, who is this one, who is this woman she will be with? She had many husbands. Who is going to be with her in heaven? He said, he and she, they will not get married. They will be the same as angels. Do you see it? And that confirmed in verse number 30. I'm just following. So if uh, I, I can put it on the screen, give me a second. Here okay. we go. So 
in the day of resurrection, and this is, uh, you know, uh, I think King James translation. Uh, yeah, this is King James translation. For in the resurrection day, neither marry, nor are they given in marriage. But they are as angels of God in heaven. So what does that mean? It's obviously that angels of God don't get married, and they are not sexual in any mean. So this is why heaven and Christianity have nothing to do with sexuality. Why? Because in heaven we will be the same as angels. So if that verse is about really angels associating themselves or sleeping with the daughter of men, then that will be a total contradiction of what we as a Christians and what Jesus taught that angels cannot and don't have sex. And there's no female and there's no male angels. Like, have you ever heard in the Bible where it says there's a female angel? I haven't read the Bible, sorry. So, no, no, I mean, even, even in Islam, there's a female angel? Uh, no, okay. no So, in the Bible, there's no male, no female, even though they are given, like, even their names is not, is not associated with, with, the, with males but associated with being, being with God, the mighty of God, the might of God, the power of God, the righteous of God, etc. So even their names have nothing to do with sexuality or gender. So angels are not to perform sex and they are not sexual and they, are, and they don't have any kind of joy of what we have. Their joy is different from our joy, which is being with God, being in heaven. And for sure they have a better let us say, uh, feature than us. As an example, living for eternity, living forever. You know, we, are, we are people who sin, who die, who get sick, who uh, get tempted, etc. And uh, they, they have a better place. However, even angels, they have a free will. And this is what we see in the story of Satan, disobey God, and he is a fallen angel. In Islam, Satan is not a fallen angel. He's not an angel, he's uh, the jinn kind. Yes. But in Christianity, he is. And that is, a, by the way, exposed the Quran about uh, the story of Allah of, uh, ordering uh, 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 angels to bow down to Adam, except Iblis, he refused. But Iblis is not an angel anyway, but he, he, he commanded the angels. So why is upset? Right? Yes. And you know, I find it I find it very strange that you are, you went all the way to to to, to read this uh, 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 angels. Uh, I mean, there is way more important things from those who they might let us say uh, be a little bit uh, need a special study. I mean, Christianity is not about those foreign angels. Christianity, uh, let us say the book no, of no, no, let, no, let no, us say the, the book of Genesis is not even there. What if the book of Genesis is not there? Still, Christianity is, is it's a, it is, we, we do not need the book of Genesis to know Jesus. The book of Genesis, the book of Genesis is a book to tell us how we, our roots, where we came from, who is our creator, where we are coming from. So if you are trying to study Christianity, then you can advise you to read the gospel, the four gospels, but if you read it from the beginning about the creation and the history of Judaism and how they became here and how Christ came, then the Old Testament is good for you. But the Old Testament, in order to understand it, I advise you to read the New Testament so you can understand the Old Testament by the explanation by the New Testament. This is why now you are confused. So if you know the New Testament that in Christianity, we do not believe that angels can have sex and they will have sex, then this verse will not confuse you. Okay, of course. You know what I mean? Like now, yeah. if I don't know what it says in the in the in the New uh, 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 Testament about angels, I will be confused like you. Who are they, those angels, and how they have uh, associate themselves with the daughter of men? And why it says daughter of men? What does that mean? You know, who is the daughter of men? What does that mean? Is that like is that something bad? Is that something good? So I can be confused too. But it's not for those who they are, let us say, uh, in depth with the, with, the, with, the, with the religion or with the books. They can explain it better. But if I want to go in a literate way, oh, it says angels. So I, you know, I stuck with the word angels. But all of us, we knew that 
Christians first believe that only there is only one person. He is the Son of God. That is Jesus. But here but the verse says they are sons of God. That's huh? the reason why I, it was not about like it was because of the word the sons of God. You see, when it's sons, yeah, it's in the plural. plural. Yeah, so sons of God simply is is people who belong to God. Yeah. That's why when we pray, we say our Father. So all the Christians, in the in a in a metaphorical way, because He is our Creator, we are produced by Him, made by Him provided by him so we call him father but doesn't mean anything to do with sex so that the son of gods they saw the daughter of men that they were uh, they were fair and they took them wives of all which they choose so uh, uh, this is speaking about the temptation of a human being how a human being can associate himself with the wicked man, this is why you see in verse number five speak about wickedness. And God saw the wickedness of men was great in earth. So in the beginning, it says in verse number two, the sons of God. In verse number five, it says the wickedness of men. But I thought only angels and daughters of men having sex or having relationship, correct? Yes. So who is the wicked man then? There's no wicked men here unless the sons of God, they are men. Of course, yeah, it, it, I can see it now. Yeah. Uh, it's like, and then God said, I will destroy men. So why God don't destroy angels? He should destroy the angels then. If the angels are doing wrong, right? Then he should destroy the angels. You know, when, when you commit fornication, there's two partners. There's not, not only one. You, you don't stone one and you let the other person go, right? So fornication is an act of two. And based on this story here, if there is a fornication, is an act of two. If they are the sons of God and they are angels, then we have to punish both of them, not only one. What is the what, what is the angels are being punished? It says then, when God He said the wickedness, the wickedness of men, that was a great in earth. Then He He decided to punish them. You know, He said, "I will destroy the men whom I have created from the face of the earth." Both men and beast, right? Yeah, I'm okay. It, yes. But you don't see there God is destroying <laughs> angels. Of course, yeah, point right. there. But, that, but anyway, you so might find somebody. You might find somebody. He tell you it says angels. It's angels. Well, it's up to him. Who care? <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, 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 he always, always to. Like when you are watching a movie, uh, some movies they show you the last scene in the movie as the first two seconds, correct? Uh. Well, I can stop and I do not need to watch the movie then. <laughs> because I saw the first, I saw uh, so in the beginning of the movie, the last two seconds of the movie. But the fact, the joy of the movie is going to be by watching the whole movie so you can understand the last scene. So here, the last scene is going to destroy them. But who? It's explained there, the men, who they are wicked. Of course. No, as a, thank you, CP, for this time also. Uh, All right. Of course, we can speak next time. All right, thank uh, you. It was just example. Thank you very much for your time. All right, take care. And have a great day. Bye. Bye-bye. All right. You see, always when you read uh, when you read a phrase, you have to connect the dots, and then you can come to the conclusion. You don't read one sentence and then you cut the rest. Do we have any Muslim would like to join us? If there is anyone here from those who support Palestine? would like to call us anyone from those who support Palestine would like to join us I like to support Palestine too but I cannot find the Palestinians
all those hippies who have tons of rings in their nose, those blonde people in Europe, in America, free Palestine, free Palestine. How come we cannot find one of you there to call us? I want you to call us so you can convince everybody that you know what are you talking about. I accuse you, all of you, those who support the free Palestine to be a bunch of ignorant. You have no idea even where so-called Palestinians exist. You don't even know what is Palestine is. What is the word Palestine mean? Last time we played your videos, many of you thought that Palestine is in the Black Sea. Hmm. They don't have to use Rumble. They can just call us in Skype. Tell them to call us. Anyone? Is the Hadith website is working now? Still not working for me. I don't know what's wrong with this website. Maybe they shut, down, they shut it down because of me. Is it working? I think it's still down. Yeah, it's still, it's still not working. All right. Uh, if there's anyone would like to call us, anyone have a, anything to say? Anyone would like to have a secret wife, like uh, the wife of uh, Amran? Look at this man, this scared the hell of me with those. What is that, man? Look at this wife. Ninja. Look how decent she is. Nobody saw her private part before, except three, four hundred. Me. Oh boy. Who is going to open the curtain? Mm, very decent religion. Yeah, yeah. Let us see here. There's nobody from uh, the supporters of uh, the Prime Minister of Pakistan, Omran Khan, can call us? Not even one? Hmm? Amriyan.com? I never heard of this website. Let me check it out. Hold on. I mean, you cannot freeze this uh, ramble to copy something. Okay, hold on. Let us try. Somebody saying there's a website for Hadith. Okay. I think I did uh, search it. Uh, did not work. If you search in Arabic, let us see. Okay, uh, I see here, but I don't see the English. Uh, this is just Arabic. I, I know for me, I can. I have tons of websites for Arabic, but we want the one can show both Arabic and English next to each other. Yeah. Let us see. Maybe there's translation. No, there's no translation. Full text show Arabic. Okay, this is Quran here. So where is search Hadith? Okay, let's search Hadith. 
Okay, let's try Hadith. Okay, maybe it have English. Okay, there's English here. All right. Okay, we can save it then. But still, I I, I prefer the other one because here, like the 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 English and the Arabic are too much of a far distance. Yeah, like this is the hadith actually I wanted to show him here. Thank you for the one who told us about this website. At least when when it's not working, we can use this one. So here I was sitting behind the messenger of Allah who was riding a donkey. While the son was sitting, he asked, do you know where this set? Speaking of the son, I replied, Allah and his apostles know best. He said it's set in a spring of warm water. Uh, the, the translation here is false. It's not warm. Hamia is a blazing hot, not only hot. Very hot, like extremely crazy hot, like, like hell. This is why the Quran described hell as Hamia. Let us save this uh, website into our uh, bookmark. Do we have anybody want to call us? Okay. Somebody tried to call me actually. Let us call him. See who is this guy. and he called so I'm calling back okay it's not answering no problem do we have any Muhammad that would like to join us Anyone? Yeah, those are like they, they don't want you to see like Muhammad now this the Dr. Muhammad, the scientist Muhammad. Uh, he knew about geography, he knew about space, he knew about uh, the inner of the earth, he knew about uh, the sun stars i mean you know this guy is is a professor he is beyond knowledge allah is his teacher what you can expect so now he's telling us where the sun set you will not find a muslim caught in this they will not and this is authentic You know, the, there, there is people when you go to their house, <clears throat> you see the house clean. Like you look at the floor, it's clean. But don't try to drop your pen and put your head down to pick it up and see what is under the couch or under the bed. Then you will find all the garbage you can imagine is under the couch and under the bed. So what they do, they use the broom and they push the dirt under the bed, under the couch. The house looks clean. But in reality, it's not. And this is Islam. So Muslim, they try to hide those things from you because those things will prove Muhammad in two seconds that Muhammad is a fraud. Imagine if this hadith has sort of scientific correctness. The Muslim will make movie about it. They will post it everywhere. They will talk about it everywhere. So now we have it in the Quran. 
we have the hadith confirm it and the Muslim they try to hide it. Any Mohammedan who support Palestine or any liberal want to join us, want to free Palestine, here we support Palestine. Stupidity. You know, the funny is that those old Muslims, they keep saying free Palestine, support Palestine, but nobody will give a visa to one Palestinian or so-called Palestinian. They hate them. They don't welcome them. They don't allow them to go to Saudi Arabia. They don't want them in Egypt. They don't want them in Kuwait. They don't want them in Jordan. They don't want them in Syria. They don't want them in Iran. They don't want them in Turkey. But they claim they love them. Do you know why they reject them? People of Gaza, they are very well known that they are people who they are doing everything is out low in this earth. You name it. Even so-called Palestinian from the West Bank don't allow them to live between them. They don't associate themselves with them. Nobody want them. You need to ask yourself why. Two days ago, actually yesterday, a Muslim from Russia and another Muslim, I think, from Tajik, Tajikistan, uh, two Muslims, and supposedly they are from the Islamic State, they attack a church in Turkey, so-called Turkey. They start shooting at people and they killed one Christian. And they were shouting Allahu Akbar. Who is going to believe that those are from the Islamic State? I don't. Those are sent by Erdogan. All Islamic countries all Islamic countries. They use terrorists, the, the intelligence on those, the same as the American, even American, they use them. CIA, they use Osama bin Laden. So, they free them from jail. I mean, they have them in jail. Why you free them? They free them in jail, second day they go and do an attack and then they take them back to jail. Are you kidding me? How you, you know that they are terrorists, you put them in jail, you free them, you put them back in jail after 24 hours, so you left them out to kill the shoot at the Christians and come back. They have a deal with them. There is nothing, it's called Istanbul. This is the Constantinople and this is Constantinia. Don't use the word Istanbul. You know what Istanbul is? Istanbul. So they took our city, they took our churches, they changed the name and they make it Islamic name. And then you, yourself, you use the Islamic name instead of the Christian name, the true name. This is a city, we are going to have it back sooner or later. If not by me, by my children, if not by my children, by the children of my children. All our churches, which is taken by terrorists, is going to be free, no matter how long. Remember, the Jews, they lost their land for more than 3,000 years. Yet they have it back. So don't think that the time can change anything. Actually, last time I spoke to a woman, I thought she is from Turkey, and I told her, I think she said she is from Turkey, I forgot. Yeah, but she is a Christian. 
and I told her about a dream I saw again about a massive, scary, terrifying earthquake in Turkey. This one I saw, it's really scary. I mean, I saw the land is moving like ocean, you know, like how the ocean, like waves. This is how I saw the land is. I saw blood everywhere. I saw dead bodies everywhere. And you know, uh, uh, I have I have always uh, uh, sometime I don't I don't like you know the dreams I see sometime because they happened you know there are dreams which uh, which usually they come to be true sometimes even I see myself speaking to somebody saying something certain certain sentence and then when I meet this person. This person, he said to me the same sentence and I respond in the same sentence I saw in the dream. So I have like a, something I can't explain. And this is why I believe that this, this earthquake, this massive earthquake is going to happen. It might happen tomorrow. It might happen next month. I don't know. But it was really, really something unusual. <clears throat> Do we have any Muhammadan? Any Muhammadan would like to call us? Do we have anyone from those who support Palestine? Come on, I want to talk to you. I want to see your intelligence, your knowledge, your history intelligence. Let us bash the Jews. Don't you want to bash the Jews? Free Palestine? You're ignorant. This is the land of the Jews. And those are not Palestinians. Those are Arab. Ask anyone from those who they are living now in Gaza. Are you an Arab? They will say yes. You stupid ignorant. Since when the Palestinians are Arab? And how? They hijack the land. They control the land. They occupy the land. And they are occupation. And then they claim that they are the one who own the land. The Arab, they occupy Syria, and now they call it the Arab Republic of Syria. But there is zero Arab in Syria. This is Syria. They have a language. It's called Syriac. Syriac, not Arabic. The same Iraq. They hijack Iraq. They killed the Christian. They took the land, and now they call it the Arab country of Iraq. But Iraq is the land of the Assyrian and the Chaldean, and those are not Arab, and they have Aramaic language. The same in Egypt, the Arab Republic of Egypt, but Egypt is in Africa. Those are Coptic African, have nothing to do with the Arab. They hijacked the land, they changed the name, the same as they did, they took Constantinople and they call it Istanbul. All the land of Turkey is a theft. More than 90% of it is coming from Greek, and Armenian and yet Erdogan he schooled people about what about occupation they just stole half of Cyprus Erdogan he just took half of Syria and then he went to school Israeli about occupation he killed every day Tons of Kurdish, and he want to teach you ethic and human right. When this come back, his jail is full of, of of prisoners of war, prisoners of politics. Him and his friend, the terrorist, the prince of Qatar, who is not a prince, he is just a Bedouin. He used to take a shower with dead dogs like Muhammad, but thanks to the British intelligence, they made Qatar a country. In fact, Qatar is born not even 40 years ago. Many of you is born before Qatar. There was no country 40 years ago. There was no country called Qatar. But thanks for the oil, the European and the American, they decide to give birth to Qatar so they can 
be a small country and yet they can control it and now what happened is the opposite the money of this small country is controlling turkey controlling egypt controlling america the money worshippers someone explained to me what muta muta is you renting a woman for sex and you call it marriage Uh, she was a Turkish Muslim. Uh, okay, yeah. She was a Turkish who converted to Christianity. Okay, I remember now. All right. So Muta is asking a woman to sleep with you in exchange for some money for a certain amount of time, amount of money, uh, like for a certain time, like one hour, two hours, two days, three days, doesn't matter. So she agree, you agree. When the time is up, there's no need for divorce. The agreement is over. This is what Muta. Muta mean in Arabic, sexual joy, sexual uh, entertainment. This is what Muta mean. Muta does not mean marriage. Muta mean enjoy something, enjoy sex. It's just a, a legal prostitution in Islam. Like Muhammad, he is a prostitute himself. Do we have any Muhammadan? <clears throat> uh, let us see. And I was watching the news today in Israel, and I don't understand really what they are trying to do in Israel. I saw they are allowing those terrorists they come back to the territory which they just freed and i don't know why i have no idea what the israeli or plan is you know what i was thinking that they will never allow anyone and they will negotiate before they allow anyone to get back but what i saw today in the news is not like that they are allowing people to come back already to the north of gaza which means all the work they have done is useless because now Hamas will come back and they will build towns. Okay, what a big deal. I don't know how the Israeli are functioning and what they are planning to do. But I don't like what they are doing and I don't think they are doing the right thing. What the point of going after them and destroying their tunnels and now they go back okay they will make a new tunnel so hamas they will come back actually i i heard in the news even hamas police are already back in north of gaza how the israeli allow them nobody understand really what the israeli are thinking and what they are trying to do I have no idea. But I have a very bad feeling about their plan. It doesn't sound smart. It doesn't sound right. But I hope I'm wrong. Let us hope so. So imagine all the work they do, and then you let your enemy come in back. So what 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 this war was for? Just to destroy buildings and destroy tunnels. As soon the war stop, they will receive hundreds of billions of dollars. Money will come like rain. And I am sure there's a lot of tunnels that Israel did not find yet. So I don't know really what, what uh, Netanyahu is thinking. I think the Israeli are under the, uh, the influence and the threat of the American. And they are following them and they are making a big mistake by doing so. No, no, not fake news. I saw, I saw that one of the commanders 
was commanding his uh, his unit to withdraw from Gaza. I saw it. You know, he was saying to them, you fought like heroes, like lions. It's time for us to withdraw. And this was in a very official uh, Israeli news agency. The only accomplishment we can say, they killed more than 25,000 of Hamas. But those people, they have a lot of people are in, and employees, you know, like now uh, those, uh, they don't have jobs, they don't have anything. <laughs> and as long as Hamas, they receive money, they can hire another 25,000 in one day. So what? Look at those tunnels, how much money they cost. The only thing that now the Israeli, they have to watch carefully from now on. But I don't trust really. I mean, if it happened before, it can happen again. I mean, look at this. 20 years doing this and the Israeli did not notice. Look at this. You can make a subway by, by, by all the by all the towns they have. Uh, I know. You see, this is election year, and Netanyahu he have a very bad situation. The Hamas they have still the hostages. The Israeli, they are weak people because they are, let us say, civil, you know. When you are civil, you are weak, sadly. Uh, you know, they are the democracy. They are striking today in the street against Netanyahu. I mean, have you ever heard of a nation? They go striking, protesting when they're still out at war. Wait. Wait, what, are, what, what, what this protest will do? So... I don't see a bright future for Israel with those Israeli. People who they are not willing to fight the enemy until they destroy him and finish the job, they will never finish any job. And the enemy will come back to you. You are just pushing it one day more. We know that those Hamas they will never go for peace. Hamas is the Palestinian. It's the truth. They are the people of Gaza. They lie when they say people of Gaza have nothing to do with Hamas. Hamas, all of them, they are from Gaza and they are the people of Gaza. Their mothers is the mother of Gaza. Their children are children of Gaza. Their uncles, their, oh, they are people of Gaza. So when they say to you civilian, that's a big fat lie. As we saw even the ENERWA, which is the United Nations organization, it is Hamas too. So everything in, 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 in Gaza is Hamas, which means is terrorist. We saw how the children, they were dancing in the street. So now if the Israeli, after all this work, as you see in the, in the screen, they would draw, okay, we give you a trash land. But that will not solve the problem. Hamas will come over again. Are you going to invade tomorrow again? Why you give them the land back? At least put conditions with other countries. Let us say, bring a police, bring a, a Egyptian police, any police, and be sure that those people will never have even a Kalashnikov in their hand. A police maybe with gun, just for safety and security, to, to perform the act of police if they have to. But now, they did not even control yet the, 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 uh, the, the line, it's called Philly, which is the line, borderline between Gaza and Egypt. They should be attacking that line first before, before they attack Gaza. They should block the nerve between Egypt and Hamas, because this is where all their weapon is coming from. They are doing it now when this should be done from the first day, not the last day. 
So I don't understand really what the Israeli are doing. However, I have to say, and I have to admit, that the Israeli as an army, they did an amazing job because such a war is not easy, going from between house to house, tunnels, building to building, window to window, and those roads are very narrow, which means the enemy can, can shoot at you in, from very short distance without you even noticing. Yet they have a very little casualty. There's no army in the world can accomplish this like the Israeli. You see, if this is the, uh, the Russian going for a war, Putin, he will, he will lose thousands of soldiers before he can take Gaza. Any army will lose a lot of soldiers. The Israeli army, they lost almost nothing even though they are going in a very tough war where the enemies can come to them from under the ground like rats. You know, if you remember how uh, people who speak about uh, military expert, they brought them to TV and they say it is going to take maybe 10 years for them to clean the area. It's going to, the Israeli will lose tens of thousands of soldiers if they invade Gaza and until now did not even reach 200 something. So I have to say that the Israeli army, and not only that, by the way, many of those who fall from the Israeli soldiers, they fall even by friendly fire, which means by mistakes of the Israeli army itself, which has happened always in war. People die by friendly fire. So we can't even count all the numbers of those who fall in this war as a casualty with the enemy. Many of them, they fail because of a friendly and mistake. <clears throat> All right, let us see if anyone want to contact us in uh, Skype. I don't see anybody. Uh, don't send me a link in Skype. I don't open Skype. Locus. Don't give me links. I don't open them. Uh, they should not be worried about Hezbollah because Hezbollah is way easier than fighting uh, Hamas. Hezbollah is not inside Israel. And uh, Israel, Hezbollah can be demolished in South of Lebanon very easy, very fast. And you can hit you can hit their target in a massive way in south of uh, you know Lebanon and uh, in the uh, in the south of Beirut. Hezbollah is way easier than fighting Hamas for a very simple reason. You don't need even to go in the ground in between their houses. Uh, this is why Hezbollah don't dare really to do um, any kind of massive attack. They are just shooting. It's like you know uh, Hezbollah now is acting like a dog who bark at the bear. You know, the dog don't dare to attack the bear, but he bark. He knew he can do nothing to the bear. So all the militants of Iran, they are acting like dogs. They bark at America, they bark at, at Israel, but they knew they are no match. That's why Iran don't dare. They say it's our dogs, not us. And if Trump, he won the election, and I am hoping that Trump, he will win. And Trump will not do as he did last time in the last four years. I hope this time Trump, he will teach those dogs and put them in their place. I hope he will not be coward because last time when he was a president, he acted as a coward. The Iranian, they hit our soldiers and he did nothing. Yes, Trump, he did that. The same as Biden, actually. Actually, Biden did better. At least Biden, he responded, even if he responded, is stupid. Trump, he did nothing at all. He acted as if he heard nothing. He saw nothing. He is not even there. The Iranian, they hit our bases in Iraq. More than 25 soldiers get severely injured. And Trump, he said, if one of them died, I will respond. Do you see the coward? So he was an idiot. So I hope, and I understand, you know, Trump is a politician. He's trying to win the election. He don't want to go in war. But do you see how they risk our kids for the sake of election? A true president, a true leader, he don't care about election. He care for victory. And victory will come to him. But they don't care. 
But this time, Trump, not because he is a hero, but because he knew this is his last four years in the office. So he have no election to worry about. So I hope this time he will do something. He will not be potato like last time. Last time, when it's come to abroad politics, he was a big potato. He was supporting Qatar. He was supporting the Muslims. He was arming them, protecting them. All of this just for the sake of money. So I hope if he become a president again, he will not be the same potato who worshiped dollar. He will not be the slave of Qatar. He will not be the potato of Saudi Arabia. He will be a president of USA. And I hope the first thing he would do, he would teach those Hezbollah and Iran and put them in their place. But would Trump do that? I don't trust him. I don't trust any of them, actually. They say to us something before election and they do the opposite after the election. All of them. Democrat, Republican, you name it. They are a bunch of liars. And time is the only way to know. Let us hope that the Trump this time will be better than Trump at that time. We will see. All right. All right. I think we have enough for today. Even though we have more than a thousand people watching, but uh, I think uh, we we cover the topic, and we have enough of it. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and tell your friends and share the videos. And in the future, if you have anyone would like to debate us, he dare to debate us. Please don't hesitate to invite them. We are here to expose what is hidden, and usually it's a shame for and to share the truth, which is bright. And our truth is about the Messiah, our Lord and our Savior. And no one belong to him. He can promote lies. If a human being, he have a failure in his life, that because he is not a true Christian, because even if you fail in finance, even if your health is collapsing, even if the whole world betray you, you are not a loser. You are a loser only when you betray your Lord, the Messiah. The Lord, he says, the one who deny me, I will deny him. So let the whole world deny you but never deny your Lord. For this is the only treasure you have. Your health is not yours. Sooner or later, you will lose it. You are young, you will get old. You are wealthy, you will take nothing with you to the grave. Trust me, the house I live in, people before me live before, and people before them live in it, and nobody take his house with him. Your car, somebody will take it. Your tax, your money, your jewelries, your, your ring in your hand will live thousands of years. You don't live even a hundred years. A ring in your hand lives way more than you. But your soul is going to live forever, either with the Lord or without Him, which means in hell. So don't cry for being poor. For blessed are the poor, Jesus said. Don't cry for being sick, because sickness most of the time brings us close to the Lord. You know, when we are healthy, we jump, you know, I'm young, I'm jumping, I'm strong. Look at my muscles, you stand in front of the mirror and you start playing with your hands. Look how strong I am. Oh, and then you find that you are not really strong. A little bacteria can kill you. A little tumor can destroy you. A little pimple in your in your tongue can make you not enjoy food. You find that how easy you are 
can be crushed. And you know what crushed mean? Crushed mean being smashed. Because you have always the wrong investment. The only true investment is when you are investing with your Lord. Your faith will make you always healthy even when you are sick. Your faith will make you always happy even when you have so little. Because when you have faith, you have appreciation. Before you eat, you say, thank you, Lord, for this little bread I have. You are thankful. A person who have a big meal, he have a big house, he have a lot of cars, he is not thankful. He want more. Never happy. This is why you see rich people committing suicide. In fact, you don't see poor people committing suicide. You see that those who have worth, those who they are spoiled, those who don't even need to work is the one who commits suicide. People commit suicide every day by drinking, by smoking, by doing all kinds of stupid things. But people who they are close to their Lord, they will never feel alone and they will never feel depressed, depressed and they will never be without hope. I saw many commercial in the internet about how to fight depression and how to uh, to avoid suicide call this number there's only number one number to call open the bible and read and become faithful then you will not need to think of yourself as a lonely person you are not you do not need a line to discuss suicide Those people who they are teaching you how not to do suicide themselves, they are desperate. They themselves, they are not happy. You call your Lord. You speak to the Lord. He will save you. He will be with you. You will not be alone. You will not be lonely. And you will not feel that the Lord betray you. Because the Lord, our God, our Savior, He never betray us. We take drugs because we are not faithful. We cheat because we are not faithful. We kill, we rape, we steal, we lie. We do all kinds of things for very simple reason. We are betraying the Lord. And then when we betray the Lord, well, our journey of betrayal will start and it's endless. And then the whole world will betray us because we are betraying everybody. From their fruits, you shall know them. So be sure that you love your Lord so you can enjoy your food. And I'm not giving you a speech. I'm a person, I went through a lot of harsh time. I told you before, I, I went through time, even I don't have a heat in my house. For the whole winter, when the degrees went minus 17, minus 18, minus 19, I don't have a heat in my place and I go live on air. I never get angry. I never said, how come, Lord, people who hate you, they have millions and I don't even have, I'm, I'm shivering inside my place. You will be tested. And either you fail, and that will be your misery because it's your choice. And you will be tested, and you will be successful, and that will be your treasure and your best investment. Every human being, he have his own pain in life. 
There's some of you lost a beloved person. There's some of you suffering from illness, physical illness, spiritual illness. Some of you going through divorce, some of you lost their son, some of you going through custody, some of you going tons of problems. Life is full of problems. Life is about problems. But remember, every problem you go through it, there's one of two directions. Either the problem will make you weaker, or the problem will make you stronger. So which one you choose to be? The weaker or the stronger? A smart person is the one who make his lost a victory because you learn from it. A foolish person is the one who cry for the rest of his life for what happened. Instead of learning from it and getting stronger so he don't do the same mistake again. He just stopped there. He's stuck with the lose. So invest with your Lord and take bad days as a good days because bad days can make you a successful person too. In fact, if there is no salt, there is no sugar. We will not know the difference. So life is like a taste of a tongue. Sometimes it's sore, sometimes it's sweet, but all of those tastes is needed so we can see the difference. Even when we taste sin, it helps us to know what the pure means. Because when you taste sin, you feel guilty, you feel bad, you feel horrible. So even sin can help you, even though this is not our target. But even when you commit sin, that can help you to know that this is the wrong thing. I don't want to do it again. Even negative can be turned into positive if you are a believer. When a woman, she marry a man and the man is a bad person, and here the word bad is very flexible. He can be bad because he's cheap. He can be bad because he's drunk. He can be bad because he's lazy. He can be bad because he's a liar. I don't know. There's tons of things about bad. But what about you, the good women? Are you a good woman? Most of the time, we see the bad of the person in front of us or our partner of life. But we don't look in the mirror and see how good we are, how big our mouth, how bad our words, how rude we are, how lazy we are. Many, they want a successful marriage or successful family, but nobody give the effort. So I say to you, if you are a man and you are lazy, fix it. It's not good for you. Your wife, she will not respect you. If you are a liar, your son will not respect you. If you are a bad mouth in person, who is going to trust you? You bad mouth everybody, and then everybody will bad mouth you. So learn from your mistakes, and this is the same for the women. Same for the child, respect your parents. If you want your children to respect you one day. Be an example of good, so you can be good in the front of the Lord. I want to say thank you. And as you see, as soon we start speaking about good and bad, people don't like it and people leave. But what we can do? People like images and cartoon. If we put a picture of an artist and we spark, start talking about it, a naked woman, people will come, people will join us, people will discuss, people will be excited. We speak about God, people don't care, right? Why do you want to care? Just a, put a picture of a naked woman in the screen and see how many people will talk about it. Put a picture of a famous person, Trucker Carson, who claimed to be Christians, yet he go to interview a pimp. We don't care really who like what we say and who don't. We know that people like to go party. 90% maybe. And maybe only 10% they like to go to the church. 
their real party is with Jesus. And there is people who their real party is being naked and having sex and drinking. Wherever one goes, where he belong. The fly go to the garbage, and the bees, they go to the flower. And we know who is our flower. And we know what is right for us. Each time I <clears throat> I speak to somebody in private, because people, they ask me sometime for help. The first thing I notice that the person who is speaking about his problem, he do not know his problem. So I struggle with them say, can you please just tell me what is the problem exactly? And then they go in circle and they tell you everything except what is the problem? You know why? Because people don't dare even to say what is their problem. They need help. They want help. But they are ashamed to say their problem. And this is what we do with our Lord. We ask him, Lord, help us. But we don't dare to say why we need help and what is our problem. Do you know those pens? They call them like whitening, you know, like you put the, in the top of the paper if you wrote something. You put this white ink to scratch it, to take it, to copy, to, to, to block it. This is what we do. We blame everybody around us for our problem, but we don't even ask, about, we don't even have the courage to speak to ourselves and say, what is really the problem? You will find that most of the problems is not even a problem. It is you who don't dare even to face yourself and to fight your own issues, which nobody knows except you. And that goes for everything, marriage, divorce, children, drugs, smoking. Like, why you smoke? I cannot resist. So what I can do to you? Nothing. What do you mean you cannot resist? Why? I am addicted. Why you are addicted? So fight it. You can fight it. How come I don't smoke? So they are asking people for help, for something no one can help them except themselves. In other way, I find that people, they are looking for, let us say, they cry out. Not because really they have a problem, which is they are mentioning, like let's say smoking, but they are seeking attention. They are seeking somebody to talk to. They want somebody to talk to them. They want somebody to show that he care for them. So I find that usually that the problem is, is not about him. He have a problem with the smoking or him having a problem with the drinking. The problem is you are lonely and you do not know what to do. So you start smoking because you are lonely. You start drinking because you are lonely. You start uh, taking drugs because you feel lonely. But the question is why you are lonely the answer is very simple you are not faithful and you don't believe in the lord otherwise why you will feel lonely we feel lonely only if we feel we are alone in this world and nobody care for us and that is the state of somebody is a disbeliever a person who believe in christ he will never feel lonely Therefore, he will never be drunk. Therefore, he will not be smoking. Therefore, he will not take drugs. Therefore, he will not start putting tattoo after tattoo after tattoo over his skin until his skin became like a rag coming from Asia or from Iran. All the craft. And what are you doing? Why you keep putting tattoo over your body? Because you feel lonely. You are bored. You don't know what to do with yourself. You think if you add something in your picture, in your skin, you will be more excited and you will seek more attention. And then you find the attention is not working and nobody is looking. And even you became used to it and now you became bored again. So we make a new tattoo. So we start with the cheek and then we go to the neck and then we go to the ear and then we go to the forehead. And then you put one in your ass and then you put one in your penis. <coughs> and the list continue until you become a piece of garbage. Sorry to say. We cannot even recognize you as a human being because you cover yourself because you are empty you are vacant you are hollow shallow all of this happened 
because you betray your Lord. He did not leave you. You left him. And now you struggle. And now you are in pain. And now your divorce is collapsing. Your marriage is collapsing. Your family is collapsing. Your wealth is collapsing. Your health is collapsing. You have no friends. You have no future. You have no present. All of this because you decide to be alone. So I say, most of people I speak to, they don't have a problem really, except being unfaithful. Because if you are faithful, all those problems will not be existing. So I say and I advise you to start with your faith. String your faith so you can string all. It's like faith is like a vitamin is a collection of vitamin of everything. Like, you know, there's food, certain food can make your hair better. Other food can make your skin better. Other food you can make your vision better. Faith is a food for every single part of you, your brain, your heart, your soul, your skin, your body, everything of you. When we have faith, we feel strong, even though we are weak. When we have faith, we feel healthy, even though we might be not, physically. But look what happened. I'm happy even when I have pain. I feel healthy even when I'm sick. I feel wealthy even when I'm poor. I don't feel alone. So now I'm happy. So what is else a human being is seeking? You try to seek money to be happy. This is what the money for. People want to be happy. They think by money they will be happy. They say to you, you can buy everything with money, which is not true. Because you will notice that the first thing money do to you, you are not happy. The more you drink, you are not happy. The more you go party, you are sad. The more you vomit. And the more you receive diseases, and the more you are corrupt. Money corrupt you doesn't make you better. If I have now, if I have the money of this guy Elon Musk, do you think I will be here? Money will corrupt me. Do you know how many people will call me? How many people will be waiting outside for me? How many people they are interested to have interview with me? How much proud I will be and how much busy with money and business I will be? Do you think I will be having time for you to speak to you and speak about God? Money will corrupt me. Anything, too much of it will kill you, except faith. Too much water, you will be drawn. Too much air, you can't breathe. Too much food, you will be overweight and you will die from heart attack or many disease. Too much salt, too much sugar, anything too much except faith. Faith will restore your life, will restore your spirit, will restore your weakness to be strength so you can be walking again. So I say, before we finish for today, that we need faith, for faith is wisdom. And the wise man is always foolish. But he can be an absolute wise if he is faithful. Even though he know nothing. Even though he did not read books. Even though he did not know what philosophy and what logic. Even though he never been to school. But he have a treasure which is the key of every success. Faith. You see, when the disciple of Christ, they used to feed them to the animals. They were not crying from sadness. They knew they will feed them an hour after now. And they were not begging for their life. They were not. They were not even afraid. Why? Because they have faith. Imagine 
You watch your brother being eaten by a lion and you are next. And yet, you can save your life. You can say, I'm not a Christian. I deny Jesus. That's it. One word. They will let you go. Still, you don't do it. What kind of a strength they have? Are they human? Yes, they are. But how you can do that? Because their faith. You cannot have victory over someone is faithful. Even if you feed him to the tiger, still he is the winner. And how we know that they are winners? We still remember what they did now. They are an example of victory. In fact, Christianity at that time was way better than Christianity now. Because those are the real Christians. So I say to you, for all those who ask me for help from time to time, I love you all. But I say to you that the only solution for all your problems is starting within yourself to be faithful, faithful to your wife, faithful to the husband, faithful to your family, faithful to your job. Be a person who Christian can be and should be. And then you will see that things will change. And don't expect the world to respect you because you are Christian. That's not what I'm saying. They might even discriminate you more. But because you are faithful, within you, you are happy. Within you, you are victorious. Within you, you know that you are successful. And within you, you know they discriminate you because you are successful. You got their attention. You hit the nerve. You know, Satan, he got upset not from... Not from the bad person, he got upset from the good person. So what do you expect? Satan will be friendly to you? So all destruction can be destroyed if you are in the right side. I hope I did not give you a headache with my little speech, but I wanted to share that because people, they need... Uh, you know, many they feel lonely, many they feel desperate, many they feel, uh, you know, like this this word betray them. Uh, some they are not able to get married, some people they are getting old, uh, some people they are young but they don't feel uh, they are being beloved, or you know, everybody have his own needs. A human being is a chain of needs. We need to eat, we need to sleep, we need medicine, we need, we need. But the most important thing is is not to take our needs as a purpose of life because it doesn't matter how much you satisfy your needs you still have your needs you eat now a few hours from now you will eat again you sleep now a few hours from now you will sleep again there is only one need can always sponsor all other needs and keep them in the track let us say keep them in order because it's normal to have needs it's normal for you to have sexual needs this is not a bad need it's a good need but the bad of it is when you seek it in the wrong way so when you have faith you will be able to conquer your needs so you can fast when you should eat. You should stop talking when you should not talk. And you can talk or you should talk when you should talk. You have more control of yourself because your faith is the one in charge. So let us make it simple. Faith is like a good judge within you, the captain of the ship. If you lose your faith, you lose your captain. The ship goes wherever the wind takes it. So either you have a captain, and that captain, he have a manual of guideline of the map, where to go, where not to go, 
where is the trinkle of Bermuda and where is the storms and where is the hell and where is the fire and where is the safe heaven and where is the, 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 the gulf where you can seek when there is a hurricane or you don't know where you are going so you better have a captain and that captain is your faith and the faith is always about what is about following the Messiah for he is the only one and this is why I advise you always an advice from me read a page or two every day from the Holy Bible it's better than all the wisdom of men and will cool your blood from all the news you hear all the things make you angry they will cool you like if you right now if you open any page in the Bible it's amazing try to do this go to your Bible right now not the internet one a physical book don't search for a page. Don't search for a verse. Open a page, whatever it is. Just push your finger there. And in an amazing way, you will find that that page is speaking to you about your special life. I'm always amazed about the Bible, how the Bible speaks to me. It doesn't matter what the story you are suffering from or what the, what, what the incident you are going through. You will find always the Bible speaking to you. Even this book is written a long time ago. In the time where there is no smartwatch, no smart phones, there is no computers, there is no AI, but this is the most intelligent book who can speak to you in a spiritual way, physical way, and can advise you and can guide you and make you so calm and comfortable. Try it. Try it and let me know what... But you discover you know actually sometimes I, I I do play I say let us see today what the Bible will say to me you know so I put my hand I you know I push it and it's always something unbelievable just try it how many of you will promise to try it at least once try it I really love to do that and I encourage you to do it and I am sure you will enjoy it. <clears throat> do you believe Assyrians will have a country? I, you know, I don't want to sound bad about Assyrian, but based on what I know, Assyrians are busy doing gambling, party. So, you know, I, I don't know, Assyrian, they look like strong men, powerful men but in the same time I see them careless to have a country you have to fight for it say party you will find them all there say defend your land nobody is there so you cannot have a country my friend unless you fight for it all right People don't fight for their rights, they have no rights. Remember that. If you don't fight for your this is why we Christian we should go vote when there is an election. Otherwise, those atheists will take over those uh, San Francisco and the gang of Biden, <laughs> the gang of Biden, they will take over. Why? Because we did not do our duty. And then we cry, we see, look, they are fighting the Bible, they are forcing homosexuality, they are doing you know, crazy stuff on us. It's your fault. You left. When you didn't remember this, the one who don't attend his garden, the weed will take over it. And that goes for everything in our life. You see, we were talking about faith. What faith is? Faith is the tool to unblock the weeds from yourself, within yourself. We talk about yard. We are not talking about physical yard now. We are talking about us. Weeds can take over us. So if we allow them to take over the government, and we did, we allow them to take over schools so they corrupt our kids. We allow them to take over our cities, our mayor, our government, our, you know, and then the result is free Palestine. 
those stupid kids they don't even know what they are fighting for they are defending the one who want to kill them and hate them why because the christians they were in a sleepy mood they decide not to involve with politics they decide not to do anything they just pray to jesus but remember the bible says faith without fruits is dead faith so if you have a true faith then you have a true work and the true work is to defend the truth and the truth will set you free all right uh, how they can fight and they can be oppressed but this is not an excuse my friend how come the kurdish they are fighting and they are oppressed they are oppressed everywhere. Iranian, they want to kill them. Kur Turkish want to kill them. The, the Arab Iraqi, they want to kill them. The Shia Iraqi want to kill them. Everybody want to kill them. They fight. You can. You can. You can. That this, we were talking about depression. We are talking about the press. They feed the disciple of Jesus to, any, to animals. Is that oppressed only? The Roman, they were slaughtering the Christians for nothing, just doing being Christians. Yet the Roman, they've been you know, like conquered by the Christians, but not by war. So if you are a person who believe in your right, your right will be there. But you don't care and you don't do anything about it. And then who is going to remember you? So now people remember the Kurdish asking for their right, but nobody remember the Assyrian because they, don't, they have no movement. They have no voice. Do you have a party in USA? Do you have a lobby? You have a lot of businessmen, rich people. They are Assyrian around the world. Are you supporting your cause? No. Say a party, everybody come. Say gambling, everybody go. And there's other things I don't want to talk about, which I don't like. I mean, you see a Middle Eastern woman, she come to USA just yesterday. Suddenly, she want to wear a short skirt. Her boobs is coming out. Her back is uncovered. What happened? Yet they claim to be Christians. And the husband walk with the wife as if nothing happened. I mean, his wife is naked. Literally naked. There's many false Christians. And the second you are a false Christian, you have no shame. USA back Kurdish leaders because they fight, you don't. Even when you fought, you decide to join uh, Hezbollah. <laughs> we know what's going on there. Anyway, <laughs> Kurdish, they are not giving gifts from America. America need the Kurdish. So if the American feel that they need you and you can do something, they will support you. The American are not doing charity, my friend. They are not. So you have a big society in America, in Canada, in Europe, but you have no weight because you, don't, you are not united. You don't have a political party in your name. And all what you do, dinner, lunch, and occasion for party and bring a singer. And hello, hello. I'm just being honest with you. Armenia is the same. The Armenian, they trust the Russian to defend them. So the Armenian, and not only that, they friends Iran. So you friend the devil and you will lose. If your best friend is Iran, how you can have a victory? God will be against you. I believe strongly that when Christians lose their lands, they are being punished for they are not being Christians. 
Armenia, their best friend is Iran. It's a fact. Armenian in Syria, they support Iran. Armenian in Lebanon, they support Hezbollah. So how you can win? You are being stupid. You will be demolished. And not only that, Armenians are very smart people, educated. I mean, there's many weapons made in, made in Russia, made by the Armenian. But Armenia has zero weapon manufacturer. They don't even have a drone. So you have a stupid leaders, stupid plan, and you trust others to protect you. So how you can win a war? The Bible says, my people being destroyed because of their ignorance. Remember that. And only ignorance, they join the devil forces to be protected by the devil. And that happened to everybody, like even Israel. When the Israeli they go against God, they will be destroyed. And that can happen again. And I will not be surprised if it happened again. All right. Uh, you know, uh, for me, uh, uh, you know, like th there is many things people do, and I don't find it. They say Jesus, they say Christ, they say they want to go to the church, but then they have boyfriend, they have girlfriend. I mean, how in the world the life function with you? How we, you know, you see, like, uh, I mean, what is that? You know, what, what, what is, uh, what do you mean you have a boyfriend? What do you mean you have a girlfriend? Is that a friend or a, a boyfriend? Is that like a friend, just a friend? Or really a boyfriend, which means you sleep with? So there's many people, they claim to be Christians. And they are angry from like, you know, they are against Biden and they are against homosexuality and they are against abortion. But they themselves are the last one to be called a Christian too. You see, they don't see themselves in the mirror. They see only the sins of others. I have no problem if the one you call him boyfriend is a friend. You go drink coffee, you talk together, etc. A girlfriend is the same, you know, like it's a friend. But boyfriends, they, you know, sleeping together, with, and then you claim to be Christian. You are the last one to be called Christian. In our life, we commit sin, and we go things, through things, bad, good, all kind of things. But as soon as we learn that this is not right, then we should fight what is not right. And if I want to say I'm a Christian, then I should act like one. At least try to be like one. You notice that as soon as we start speaking about God and being good, and you know, people leave. You know, we have a thousand, a hundred. The second we start talking about Bible, etc., people don't like it. You know, they want us. They want to hear about Trump and Biden and the uh, actors and. <laughs> Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, and the story of uh, Samson is not about his hair. You see, people, they understand the Bible wrong. Who said that God, he hide the strength of Simon, Samson in his hair? You understand the verse is wrong. You see, Samson, he was, like, uh, I don't know the word in English, uh, uh, like devoted to God, let us say, they, they, they made a vow. I, I hope I'm saying the word correctly. So, the hair is to keep his hair long, is the vow. So, when, when you cut the hair, you are destroying the vow. So, like, I promise God, I will never cut my hair. But it's not the hair is important. It's not where my power is. It's the promise. 
So if I lose the hair, which I promised not to cut, then I just broke the promise with God. And this is the story of Samson. It's not about hair, and if you cut the hair, you lose your power. No. It's when God is with you, and when you are with God or with, without God. So when you betray God, when you break your covenant with God, when you break your promise with God, you have no strength. This is the story of Samson. It's not about hair. What hair? Do you understand? This is not about hair. Who told you that power is in hair? You are reading, reading the verses wrongly. All right. Uh, <clears throat> when you are with the Lord, the Lord is with you. The Bible says, if the Lord is with me, who could be against me? As simple as that. And how you can be with the Lord? Simply, not everyone says, believe to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of my Father, but the one who does his will. Right? So, to be with the Lord, bring victory. And to have victory, you have to be with the Lord. And how you can be with the Lord is obeying his command. Absolutely, you can download all my videos. All my videos are for free for everybody, and I don't... I'm not like those people who get upset if they download their videos. Download them, pause them anywhere you want. All right? And one more advice. Never learn your Bible from a, from a video or a movie. Like in the other day, I saw, uh, get my attention, a movie about Noah. And I said, oh, okay, there's a movie about Noah. Let me see. Maybe it's not from the Bible. But then, you know, they start calling God the creator. And then there's rocks moving. And what is this, you know? So they corrupt the story of the Bible. And they change the meaning. And they don't want to use the word God. Very silly movie. So don't learn the truth of the Bible from... A movie movie is a movie the director he can add words he can add different ending he can make the black white and the white black and the, he can make the he can change the food he can change the clothes he can change everything why you want to learn about Jesus or any story from the Bible you have to check carefully and I found that 90% of the movie made about the Bible are have a very bad things inside them bad message all right all right yeah i don't know if you watch this movie noah i mean the rocks are talking and they are building the ship for noah <laughs> what a silly movie you know oh boy a lot of fictions yeah and then you know a naive person he he watched this movie he will believe that this is really what happened you know they will believe it when the whole purpose of this movie is making money you know right, look at those uh, creatures you know like uh, I don't know if you remember the movie I just saw it a few days I did not even continue like even 15 minutes I was I was laughing I was saying what is this this is not even good for kids. You know? Yeah, those are the ones who built the ship for Noah. <laughs> All right. What we can say? <laughs> All right, people. I want to say God bless you. And uh, uh, I, I pray that some of you already have Sunday. So enjoy your, you know, your Sunday and enjoy your church if you are going. And uh, we pray the Lord will bless us in our life, in our day, in our morning, in our night, in our health, with our family and everyone we love and people who love us. We pray uh, the Lord to forgive us for our sin and for our trans uh, uh, past or what they call it, like trespassing. Uh, uh, 
uh, for all you know uh, things which is not the right thing to do uh, in the same time we pray that the Lord will guide us to be better tomorrow to be better than yesterday for if we could not succeed to make tomorrow better then tomorrow never come we are still in, yes in, in yesterday so we pray that tomorrow will be better we will be better people we will be better in ethic we will be better Christians and we will be more loving and giving and we will be what the Lord wants us to be I want to say thank you for being here and until I see you maybe tomorrow I hope so if not again soon uh, may the Lord bless you and give you all good health and worth. This is your brother Christian Prince was serving you humbly for today. Take care.